How well would you function with only half a brain? What if, like the person pictured here, you had lost nearly 50% of your brain tissue to the surgeon's knife, leaving an empty void where there had once been speech, movement, emotion, and memories? How much brain do we really need anyway? Dawn, Johns Hopkins Hospital. Today, four-year-old Carly is going to have half her brain removed. This radical operation is her only hope to ever lead a normal life. Drastic as it seems, it's worth the gamble. It paid off for this little girl. Two years ago, she had half her brain removed. Today, Jody's a bouncy kindergartner. Let me see your dress. On the outside, she looks practically intact. Can you turn around? Can you dance? Is that a dancing dress? Inside her skull, the remaining left half of her brain has taken over most functions once performed by the right. Okay, can you stand and her crippling one? seizures are gone. Oh, like a ballerina. This procedure, called a hemispherectomy, is helping researchers understand some of the fundamental mysteries of the brain. Knock, knock. Who's there? Bill. Bill who? No. Boo. Boo. Bill. Boo who? You don't have to cry about it. <laughs> Only a few hundred children have ever had this operation. Like Jody, most of them have severe brain disorders that cause seizures and make normal development impossible. Much to everybody's total amazement, you can function almost as well with half a brain as with a whole brain. They don't move their arm as well. They don't move their leg as well. But what's most important is their intelligence. And their intelligence can be normal with half a brain. So if a human being can function with just half a brain, what does that mean about the flexibility of the brain? For many years, experts believed the brain was hardwired and inflexible that if one part was injured, the remaining healthy parts couldn't take over and make up for the damage. But the recoveries of these children provide tantalizing new evidence of the brain's adaptability, forcing scientists to rethink many long-held assumptions about the complex and mysterious workings of the brain. But for Carly, the upcoming operation is simply a matter of survival the last resort to curb her devastating seizures. Though her parents know the operation is risky, they've decided to go ahead. There are major fears. Small children can have major problems during the operation. They can bleed. We've had uh, several who have died in the post-operative period. We hope that that won't happen. Carly suffers from a birth defect called tuberous sclerosis. The left half of her brain is severely damaged and causes up to 15 seizures each day. Good girl. Good girl. Very nice. As a result, four-year-old Carly hasn't yet learned to walk or talk. It's as if her computer is crashing dozens of times each day. And her physical development is also stalled. Her defective left hemisphere is slowly making her right arm paralyzed. Good job. I think with the, with the right arm gone, you know, in the, in the uh, I think that made the decision for me. The fact that there's nothing, no benefit to keeping the hemisphere. Preparation for the 10 hour operation begins before dawn. Just the waiting is going to be terrible. I think the hardest part is sending her in and putting her in their hands. Come here, sweetie. Now, you give her a kiss, and now she's my daughter until I give her back. Oh, my gosh. Come to Uncle Aaron's. See you soon. Yeah, bye-bye. It's a very difficult decision. Are you willing to give up half your brain? It requires an enormous amount of faith and an enormous amount of trust between parents and doctors. 
Though neurosurgery has come a long way from its early days, there is still more that is not known than known about how to repair a human brain. We still have the feeling that we're working in the dark. We actually don't know what's going on. And the real problem is in understanding this thing here. For decades, horror movies have portrayed a chilling vision of brain surgery. But even in the 1930s, real brain surgery was every bit as frightening. While non-surgical techniques sometimes look more like torture than therapy. Electroshock therapy may be recommended for other disorders. Since those days, scientists' understanding of how the brain functions has changed dramatically. The brain's remarkable powers are generated by 100 billion neurons, a vast electrochemical complex that sparks with energy millions of times each minute. Over many years, brain experts have painstakingly mapped out the brain to determine which parts control which functions. They now know where hearing resides, where touch and taste are, and where language comes from. But there are many mysterious regions of the brain still waiting to be mapped. And many questions remain about what happens when the brain is forced to relearn some of its most basic functions, as it does after a severe stroke or following a hemispherectomy. According to Carly's surgeon, Dr. Ben Carson, a child will recover from a hemispherectomy far more successfully than an adult. And the uh, young children, of course, uh, unlike with adults, all the, uh, the neurons and connections have not been well formed, well established yet. And of course, by the time you get to be an adult, all the cells are more or less set in their way. It's a very interesting area. Thank you.